What's up guys, thanks so much for being here. Today, we're checking out a really cool new gimbal, the Crane 3S. So, thanks for joining and let's get into it. a beast <laughs> so you might have seen in my last video but this is my primary gimbal the DJI Ronin S overall I've had it for a couple years and this thing is pretty much pretty much never let me down it has its pros and cons but today we're gonna be talking mostly about the crane 3s so this gimbal is like supposed to be a great setup for anywhere between running gun filmmaking to studio stuff where you have really heavy camera gear you have follow focuses attached you have monitors attached you have image transmitters attached microphones everything on your camera basically for comparison the ronin s which is what i normally use can hold up to seven to eight pounds versus this one which can hold up to 14 or 15 pounds which is just crazy so basically you can hold anything from like a sony which is pretty lightweight to like a red which is really heavy camera and big and needs a lot of room and you need to attach a lot of stuff to it so this thing's pretty sick there's lots of screw holes there's lots of different adapters you can attach it to a jib you can attach it to a car you can attach it to a tripod pretty cool Enough of the specs, enough of the specs. All we really care about here is, does it work? Is it easy to use? Is it fun? Does it help you make cool stuff? We actually just got back from testing it out and this thing was awesome. So, you decide for yourself, check this out. So really the only downsides for this gimbal are that it's pretty awkward to pick it up off the ground just because this is so low clearance and then also it's pretty heavy so kind of tiring if you're doing a long shoot. Not really a big deal and probably anybody that's going to buy this should be expecting that. They actually have a pro version that is like four or five hundred dollars more that has like a little spacer that goes right there so it puts it up like this high off the ground instead. Other than that, this thing was great. It always felt really secure when we were using it and the grips all feel really good. This is like super ergonomic for your hand to feel good in there. And then this is like really grippy. The movements were really smooth and natural on it too without having to even change any settings. So I pretty much just use it on the pan follow mode and it worked really great for all those shots. I used the POV mode for a couple of things like the point of view from the one wheel, just to kind of show that that's an option. Looks like a FPV drone, pretty sick. So one of the biggest differences is obviously the low mode. You've got the handle, when you hold it, basically your camera is just right at the right spot, no effort. On the Ronin, you have to kind of hold your hands all awkwardly leaning forward and it just kind of sucks. But you can do it. It's not the end of the world. But Crane, way better. For normal shots like pushing forward and pushing backwards, both of them did really well. Honestly, I thought the Crane, if you're a little bit higher up, the Crane is a little bit more exhausting because you're holding both of your arms like this compared to the Ronin where you're holding your arms like this and you've got a little bit more support for that weight on one spot. So both are great. Depends on what type of work you're doing. Like if you're doing a shot where you're filming someone normally walking and talking, maybe you need the Ronin. 
but if you're doing a lot more cinematic stuff, lower shots looking up at people, fitness things, or skateboarding, or one wheeling, or whatever, uh, maybe the crane makes a lot more sense. Another thing I really liked about this was the locking axes. So you can lock each axis, or unlock it obviously, and balance it a lot more precisely. If you need to adjust it for like a different lens or something, you could just do do it a lot, a lot more seamlessly than the Ronin. Um, with the Ronin, you pretty much just have to like wiggle it around and like hold the axis so it doesn't move while you're doing it. So it's never like completely accurate. So that's one of my big problems with that is it just never feels like perfectly balanced. But this one, it really seemed really great. Build quality on both, pretty much about the same. The Ronin's a lot more stripped down version of a gimbal. It does the job, it does it well, it does it smoothly. The footage always looks great, it's easy to use. But the crane has a lot of benefits because you can upgrade it, you can do more complicated things, you can adjust your settings on it, and it looks a lot cooler, in my opinion. So, yeah. Another plus is the battery compartment right here. So the Ronin has a great battery capacity, but this one just has three of these little batteries. The fact that you can replace them is really great. So like, for example, what if you were going on like a hiking trip or something, you're not gonna have power and having the option to bring more batteries is like awesome. So not something I ever have needed, but I could see why that could be really beneficial to some people. Another big difference on these is the range that you have. So this is as far back as it can go. It can just go to there. So pretty much all you ever need, but on the other one, it can do a full 360, which is just crazy. You got way more room for your camera, even with this 16 to 35, which is pretty long. Still fits, totally fine. You could probably even put your Rode mic on there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So a gimbal like this could be really great as a long-term investment because maybe let's say you're starting out right now and you have a mirrorless or like a Sony or something super lightweight or an USR, and then you know that in the future you're gonna upgrade to cinema camera gear. So you could potentially just buy this one which is just a little bit more than the Ronin S at this point and pretty much keep it all the way through your career and never have to go out and buy another gimbal. So something to consider if you know that that's the direction you're going in. I would probably personally prefer their version of this that's a little bit smaller and lighter because if I'm using it for a USR, I don't need this heavy duty of one, but overall, this thing was great. All right, that's about it for me today, guys. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was helpful. If you're looking at getting one, shout out to my brother for helping with this video. I think he did awesome. It was literally his first time ever using a video camera and a gimbal, so man so many things for him to learn but he killed it maybe i need to do a video just about how to use a gimbal <laughs> from all the tips i gave him um but it was fun really appreciate it and appreciate you guys for being here so if you like the video smash the like button hit subscribe turn on your notifications so you don't miss any videos whenever i drop them and i hope to see you guys in the next one peace Keep that in there. Need a good blooper.